EVs are losing up to 50% of their value in one year. Oh my gosh, it's the end of the world. And this definitely isn't taken out of context. Oh, and also used EVs are too expensive. What's that about? How can both things be true? Of course they can't. Let's discuss it. I'm Brian. Welcome to Futurasa. So I found this absolute bit of genius here from uh, Wired. Now, you guys who know me, the only way I would write an article this bad is if I was wired specifically to my tender bits and then shocked because this is ridiculous. EVs are losing up to 50%. Some electric brands are hemorrhaging value, with the worst losing as much as $600 a day. You started with a pretty expensive one, I'm guessing. In this investigation, oh, it's not even a report, it's an investigation. Wired outlines which models to watch, why it's happening, and how you can game the system, uh, the market to your advantage. Well, I'm going to tell you right now, the, <laughs> the way it works is either they're worth too much, in which case you get a good trade-in, or they're not worth anything, in which case you get a heck of a deal on a second-hand one. Let's take a look. Let's keep going here because electric vehicle depreciation is something of a hot topic right now. And for good reason, on one hand, there are some fantastic deals to be had on the secondhand market. But on the other, of course, there's a thorny issue of some EVs losing half their value in a single year. Cars losing a chunk of cash the instant they're driven off the lot is nothing new, of course. And if you intend to keep your shiny new EV for a long time, then it's worth after a year or two doesn't matter because you're not about to sell it. If I tried to sell my eight, nine month old, oh gosh, 10 month old uh, Model Y, I'm sure I would take a bath compared to what I paid. Except we're comparing MSRP without incentives. And the secondary market value absolutely considers new car incentives. So that 52-ish that I paid is really more like 44-ish. And yeah, I haven't lost that much at that point, though I did not qualify for the tax credit. But what if you've experimented with your first EV? You know, guys, this is just so terrible. We are using two tools for this research. The first is an online appraisal system by Edmonds, and, uh, and the other is CAP HPI. So you're not doing an investigation, you're doing a book report. Wired. Come on. Main offenders. Our first discovery was that in the UK. Ah, different market. So maybe they have different incentives. New electric cars lose 50% of their value in the first 12 months. Yes, you read that right. Some by 50% in a single year. Yes. Now, this can't be said of every EV. There it is. But uh, a respected online car resource revealed how six different EVs are projected to halve in value after 12 months and 10,000 miles. These include the Audi G-Tron, uh, e-tron GT, uh, which plummeted by 49%. Hmm. And the Ford Mustang Mach-E, which fell by 52%, and the Polestar, which lost 52%. Hmm. Well, that's weird. The usual suspect I would expect on there isn't there. Oh, there it is. The Tesla Model 3 fared only slightly better, falling by falling by 45% in its first 12 months. So it did 8% better, or rather 20% uh, less depreciation. About that. Ridiculous. 16 to 20%, what is it? So, yeah, these prices are all based on a mid-spec version of the car, since, factors, there, since there's a million factors. Boy, I feel like an apples to apples comparison might be a better one. But you know what's had less of an impact on depreciation? Uh, mileage. Uh, so they looked at some and found that despite higher mileage, uh, it didn't really affect it. YouTube Mac the Master has been charting the decrease in value of his own two year old Tycon, which dropped from 122 down to 44,650. Now that's got to be the trade in value, a dealership valuation. Of course it is. You can't count that. That's that's basically the wholesale price. If you're counting that, you need to go back to that 120,000 pound figure and, and, and look at what the actual dealer invoice was. That would get you 
a more accurate picture, still wildly inaccurate, uh, the secondary market has their own prices. <laughs> and trading it in is the worst that you could get. But I'm confident Wired will say, hang on, what was the actual value on the actual market? Hmm. They did not. So I'm going to pause this and see if I can find it. I am back. I am back. Uh, and I found it. Here it is on autotrader.co.uk, where we see the lowest price two year old Tycon is 52,000 pounds. Well, that's like 20, 25% higher than what the article said. Then it jumps straight to 66, 55, 76, 80, 67. So this article is lying by, by 50%. By 50%, they're showing, uh, that's that's the trade in depreciation, but they're showing this one, this guy is saying it is worth a paltry 44000 So that's, hmm, yeah, that's ridiculous. Uh, he still owes 64 7 Okay, well, good, because as we just saw, that's about what it's worth. Ridiculous. Very lazy writing. <laughs> I mean, someone's getting paid good money to write this. Okay. Depreciation of the Model 3 also slows significantly after the first year. Is that what this is? No. Uh, after a year and 10,000 miles, and then only by an additional 2,500 pounds after two years. So the big depreciation is right up front, and then almost no depreciation. Yeah. And you notice it didn't... Yeah, they're, they're being intentionally misleading here. When comparing a gas liter at Audi Q755 with an electric Audi e-tron 55 SUV, both a year old, uh, and one is down 42% more after 12 months, despite costing less when new. Yeah, but that's an Audi, man. The EQE, I expect depreciation like this. This is pretty normal Mercedes depreciation, really. Uh, let's see the if it says it here. This is true with lower value cars. Okay. So yeah, when comparing ridiculous. Okay. Auto America now for US prices. Oh, here we go. You got in a wheelhouse, my friends. According to Edmonds, uh, Porsche Taycan Turbo with 10,000 miles, well under the average, was worth 106, which is 50,000 below what it would have cost new, not including optional extras. Right. But it's a Porsche. The Polestar 2 long range single motor uh, has a trade in value of 30,000. Trade in? You have to stop with that. That's dishonest. What do you, why would, do you want me to not trust you automatically? As with the. <laughs> so, yeah, we're going to go back and blame this, of course. Electric cars are performing less well, losing an average of 49%. Yeah, because so much of these. Uh, such a percentage of these vehicles across the industry are uh, first generation vehicles. First generation plus luxury in a lot of cases, like a lot of the Mercedes, the Taycan, the Audi, uh, the BMWs, those are first generation plus luxury. It's not the electric part that's killing you, it's that it's a whole new thing. And these companies waited 15 years too long to enter the game and certainly 10 years too long to begin production. It's mm -hmm. it's common knowledge uh, among EV buyers that replacing a failed pack can be incredibly expensive, anywhere from sixty five hundred to twenty thousand, and that's true. I know there are battery packs that do cost twenty thousand. I don't know anyone who drives one of those, but I talked with a service tech at the BMW dealership in Portland who told me that that price should not surprise you twenty thousand dollars. But again, that's a Porsche. And you're going to have an eight year, 100,000 mile minimum warranty in the US. And other countries have similar long warranties. Some companies go even farther, further. Some companies go even further. Uh, many Teslas have warranties into the 120, 125, 150,000 mile range. And there are new batteries coming out that may have a million mile warranty. Now the replacement cost for that aspect of the vehicle is zero. Yet despite EV batteries lasting longer, year over year depreciation horror stories, year one depreciation horror stories remain. That's just called a car. 
That's a car. That's all cars. An anonymous call to Mercedes dealer revealed it had lost 51,000 in just three months. An anonymous call. So you call up and said, hey, I'm not going to come in. I'm not going to show it to you. How much will you give me for my trade-in? Yeah, they're going to lowball you, my friend. Why is this happening? Well, because I'm a terrible author of a not very good story that's ignoring all nuance. Oh, there, there's, I get it. I get it. Headlines like this sell. Please stop trying to sell them. And to the people out there, please stop buying them. The link will be in the description. Please don't click it. It's so ridiculous. Uh, so what should you do? Well, EV sales are still on the up. They accounted for 18.5% of all new sales in the UK in July, uh, up 18% from the previous year. So if you can charge at home, it makes sense. So the best advice, buy secondhand unless you can truly afford to not care otherwise. That's my advice to anyone looking to buy a car of any type. If price is no object, buy new. If price is the number one object, uh, buy one or two years old with a big chunk of the depreciation already out. You'll still get some warranty and you'll save a bunch of money. And for everyone else in the in-between, make a decision for yourself. But whatever you do, do not listen uh, to, to Wired, because I am convinced, and I'm sure I'm not alone in this, that Alastair Charlton is the name of a cartoon villain uh, in like a 70s after school special kind of thing, because it sounds like the bad guy in the movie, but too cartoonish. No offense, Alastair. Please do better work. I can't imagine paying for this article. If you had submitted it to me, I would have rejected it and said, uh, you've missed the entire story. So what did I miss? What did I misunderstand? Leave it in the comments below. Like and subscribe. A lot of you have been unsubscribed. Close friends have said, oh my gosh, I just checked and I was unsubscribed. Make sure you're still subscribed, should you so desire. Everybody else, like, subscribe, do the usual, and stay tuned, stay juicy, and I cannot wait to hear from you clever robots on the flippity-flop.